The FCIA presents Fiber Channel Zoning Fundamentals, Different Types of Zones. I'm going to talk to you guys about uh, what are the different types of zones you can uh, create in a fiber channel fabric. Fiber channel really introduced the whole concept of uh, shared storage. Uh, if you guys have been in the industry for a long, uh, direct attached storage is what was uh, popular 25 years ago, right? Um, fiber channel was built uh, from the grounds up for um, really storage uh, interconnectivity in a fabric. And, um, you know, um, uh, that's why it has, uh, it's very popular and, and you know, customers continue to uh, buy more fiber channel uh, fabrics because they want to take advantage of shared storage and versus, you know, having these islands of storage attached to servers. So uh, with that, uh, you know, the three types of zones that we can uh, create and are most popular are single initiator based zones, uh, pair zones and target driven zones. And then of course the switch based, uh, switch port based hard zoning that AJ talked about. So uh, the first type, which is a single initiator based zones is actually very uh, similar to how we used to um, connect, you know, uh, when we had direct attached storage on a SCSI bus, right? You know, where you had a single HPA, single adapter in the server connected to uh, either several disks or even an external storage device that was a storage array that was directly connected to the server. So single initiative based zones are very similar to that. Basically you have one HPA port uh, zoned with one target port uh, that way, you know, the RSCN uh, domains are very, very targeted. And, you know, if there's something that's happened, meaning with the initiator or the target port, only the two devices are, are notified and really there is no impact uh, on the rest of the fabric. Uh, this is uh, very popular because, you know, this, that's how uh, Fiber Channel began. And, um, you know, um, you know um, the only downside to this particular type of zone is that you can end up uh, in a large fabric. You can end up creating a lot of zones because if you have a fabric with you know, uh, 10, 1500 servers, uh, usually every server has two ports you know, for multipathing, uh, you, know, you, you can end up creating a lot of zones and hence for management of these zones as well as there is a possibility of exceeding uh, the zone database limits. As AJ pointed out, right, this is a very resilient service within the fiber channel fabric. Uh, you know, uh, zoning databases are replicated across the fabric. So, uh, you know, uh, this is a critical function, um, you know, if, uh, you know, in, in, a, in a highly available enterprise storage uh, network. The, the, this is a new type of zones that we came up in the FCI and the T11 group, right? It's the peer zones and the target driven peer zones. Uh, peer zones uh, uh, were created right really to keep the concept of uh, uh, zoning um, and um, you know but you know try to reduce the number of zones that we have to create so peer zones basically introduces a concept of something called a principal device which is usually the target port on the storage array uh, you can include n number of initiators in the same peer zone um, and the ability, uh, the beauty about a peer zone is uh, only the principal device can communicate uh, with all the non-principal devices in the peer zone. Uh, in most cases, even the principal device cannot communicate with another principal device in the peer zone. So that way, you know, you get all the benefits of single initiator zoning, yet you reduce the number of zones. Um, an extension to this concept is a, a what we call target driven peer zones where basically the storage array is responsible for all the creation and the management of all the peer zones in the fabric uh, the beauty of target driven peer zones is that um, you know the storage array while the customer is doing LUN masking or in a more simplistic term presenting these LUNs um, you know to particular servers um, you know, the zoning uh, operation ha happens automatically. Uh, so, you know, the storage admins don't have to go and manage um, all these zones, you know, uh, independently. And also it reduces basically a one major step, uh, you know, uh, in, in storage orchestration. So when it comes to, you know, storage orchestration, you know, TDPZ zones can really help, um, uh, you know, uh, automate that process 
And the beauty about doing it in the protocol is that you know it happens at the at the lower most of the foundational layer of the fabric. So uh, you know the the resiliency of the the zoning engine built into the database is replicated all over the fabric. So everything is managed you know pretty seamlessly. And the third type of zone that I will talk about is called uh, switch based uh, port zoning. Uh, port zoning is uh, very restrictive because you really have start you know uh, creating you know uh, zones based on ports in the switch and you know if a device is moved to a different port it can lose access uh, to the particular uh, you know uh, uh, target and so henceforth i mean this type of zoning uh, very few customers end up using this type of zoning uh, also keep in mind that uh, you know, when it comes to advanced storage uh, features like peer persistence, you know, uh, some type of replication, et cetera, they generally do not support port-based zoning. So, you know, my general recommendation to customers is, you know, avoid port-based zoning. Um, you know, uh, you know, I really recommend target-driven and peer zones. If you, if customers, uh, uh, you know, are 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 interested. Uh, but you know, uh, legacy point of view, single uh, you know single single initiator based zoning is what's most popular. But uh, peer zones and target driven peer zones are are are, are gaining um, quite a bit of momentum. For more resources on fiber channel zoning fundamentals, visit the FCIA YouTube channel.